Now that we've got this 8080 computer running, I want to see how many basic interpreters from the era of around 1975 to 1979 we can actually get running on this machine. There's a lot of very popular basic interpreters from that period that I think work really well on this machine. Let's take a look. The first basic interpreter I want to demonstrate is Tiny Basic, which dates from about the time of the infamous Bill Gates letter uh, scolding hobbyists for stealing software. And out of that comes Tiny Basic. Tiny Basic originated around 1975. The version you're going to see here is dated 1976. Tiny Basic is integer only, no strings or math functions, but it's very easy to adapt to different computers runs on the 8080, the Z80. I've seen versions on 6809, 6502. Just about every 8-bit microprocessor from the time can run Tiny Basic. Fits in about 2K of RAM, and it has all the commands you see here, a minimal set of commands necessary for a functioning basic interpreter. So let's get it running on the 8080 computer, shall we? Here's the source code on the left. As you can see, it's dated from 1976. I've made a few changes down here at around line number 1300. And those changes are really just to adapt for my I.O. So I, I didn't have to do anything to Tiny Basic other than define the serial port that I have on my computer. And that's it. Let's take a look. So here's the Tiny Basic hex code. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that into my computer. And I do that by pressing the L key for hex load. And then I'm just going to cut and paste that right into the screen. This is TerraTerm. It's got a lot of really useful features for the kind of computer systems that I like to build and work on. And that's what I'm, I'm using for this demonstration. Now let's get the loader installed. Now this is going to load Tiny Basic over my monitor, which is uh, starts at address zero. Well, Tiny Basic needs that same address space, so the loader is going to take it from address eight thousand and put it right into zero 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 zero. So let's press L again. I'm going to paste that into the computer. Now the loader's present. It starts at nine thousand. I'm going to jump to address nine thousand, and Tiny Basic immediately responds. Let's enter one of my favorite programs, which is just to count to 10. All right, let's list the program. There it is. Let's run it. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Let's try another interpreter that's also historically interesting. And now the machine that started it all, the Altair 8800, came out around 1975. Let's take a look at BASIC for it. Altair BASIC came in two versions, a 4K version and an 8K version, developed by Microsoft, and later on other engineers worked on it for the Altair. It's a floating point BASIC interpreter with six digits of precision. Strings are in the 8K version. Math functions are also in the 8K version. You can see from the list here in the 4K and the 8K version, commands are pretty comprehensive. The 8K version has even more. Here's where you can see the string commands and the math commands are available as well. Let's load it and give it a try. This 4K version was much more difficult to get going. First, this is that we don't have the original source code for 4K. Uh, so there's a number of folks that have disassembled the 4K binary. I've taken their disassembly, cleaned it up a bit, and adapted it for the 8080 computer I built, which was mostly to change the I.O. address for your console port and also to add some more modern features like the backspace key and things like that 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 will adapt it to modern terminals. Let's load this and give it a try. There's the 4K basic hex file. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press the L key to hex load and then just paste that in. 
I'm going to do the same thing for the loader. And then just jump to 9,000. The loader is going to take 4K basic, overwrite the monitor, and start. So let's start at 9,000. First thing it's asking for is memory size, which allows you to reserve some memory for your own assembly language functions. I'm just going to hit the Enter key. Terminal width allows you to adapt basic to the width of your terminal or teletype. I'm just going to hit the Enter key on that. Now it wants to know, do you want the math functions? And I'm going to say yes to that. Now we're up and ready to go, version 3.2, 4K. I'm going to use that same program I wrote earlier to count to 10. I got a funny character at the end, so let me type that in again. Now I'm good. There we go. Let's move on to the 8K version. We do have source code for the 8K version of Altair Basic, which is nice. I made the usual changes to the IO routines to adapt Basic to my machine. Let's load it and give it a try. So I'm going to copy and paste. 8K is a little longer. I'm going to paste it into the console, load, now to get the loader, and in this case I jump to B1000. 8K Altair Basic up and running. I'm going to enter in the same count to 10 program. So list it. it is. Let's run it. Excellent. Next on the scene was the MCA 8080 a machine made popular on the movie War Games. It also has basic release for it, although it's not Microsoft basic. It was released around 1976 and 1977. It's a floating point basic with six digits of precision. Strings are in the 8K version. Math functions are also in the 8K version. As you can see from the list that's in both 4K and 8K versions, an extensive list. This is a nice basic interpreter. The 8K version, as you can see, gives you the math commands and the string commands that uh, are common in a lot of the basic interpreters from that time. Since the 4K and 8K versions of MCA Basic are virtually the same, I'm just going to load the 8K version and demonstrate it. Load. All right, while that's loading, I'm going to get the loader copied in. And let's load the loader. Let's run it. And then we now have the 8K version of MCA Basic up and running. It says 9K on the screens, 8K in the source code. Let's try our favorite program. List it. Then there, let's run it. Excellent. How about something a little more complicated? Let's run a popular program called sign.basic. And since I'm going to be copying this in like it was a paper tape, I'm going to change the input parameters to add some delay. And then I'll copy that in. Now let's run it. Now 
Nice. Here's an interesting one. Selby is acknowledged as one of the earliest personal computer makers in 1975, starting with the 8008 processor. They were intending to release products with the 8080 processor, but I don't believe they actually ever got any of those to market. One of the things they did do was become really successful at publishing technical books. And one of those technical books was on Cellbell, which is a basic interpreter. The book Cellbell contains very detailed explanations of the source code for this interpreter. We're going to give that a try and see how it works. Cellbell was released around 1976. There were versions printed for 8008 and the 8080 processor. I'm using the 8080 version. Well-documented source code. Floating points uh, around six digits of precision. Optional strings and math functions. I've loaded the strings and math functions in my version. So you can say the instructions for both standard and extended are fairly complete. You've got uh, a nice set of instructions even in the standard version. And then the extended version includes strings and math. To get cell bell loaded, first we're going to copy in the hex file. Load it. While that's loading, let's bring the loader in. Let's load it. Run it. And Selby's up and running. First thing we do is clear memory. And let's type in our favorite program. List it. It's there. Run it. Selby's Cellbell interpreter is floating point by default. You can see that in the 1.0 and 7.0, how it's counted. If I wanted to make those integers, I could simply cast in as an integer and then it will display as an integer. Let's try something a little more complex, like a game. Run Hammurabi. I'm going to copy that in. This is going to run a little bit like paper tape. It's going to take a little while. I'll come back once it's loaded. Okay, Hammurabi finished loading. Let's give it a try. Excellent. Ooh, doesn't look like I'll be a great leader. One of the best basic interpreters I've found for the 8080 between the period of 1976 and 1979 is XY Basic by the Mark Williams Company. This was initially published in 1977, and the source code is still available today. Very, very modular design, easy to adapt to the computer of your choice. The source code supports 8080, CPM, ISIS-2, Intellect 8, MinDS, and SEC-80. It has a support for long variable names, and there's optional strings, floating point, and math functions. If you need a small interpreter, you can do without those. But if you have the memory, you can add those in. It's easy to do with equates in the source code files. It's got a set of unique machine interface I.O. commands. And as you can see from the command list below, very extensive. This is one of the more complete basic interpreters I've been able to find. It's extremely good. It's also very fast. Let's take a look. This is the source code. As you can see, it's got quite a few equates available for tailoring the source code for whatever machine it is you want this software to run on. Uh, I think it's well written, it's very modular, and it's easy to adapt to another computer. All I needed to do here was adapt its I.O. routines for the console port that I use on my machine. Let's get it going. First, I've got to copy in the hex file. Load it. Uh, 
I don't need a loader for XY Basic. It starts at address 1000. So once this load is complete, all I have to do is jump to address 1000 and it's ready to run. There we go. Excellent. Automatically figures out how much memory is available for programming and we're ready to go. Let me enter in my favorite program. So let's it, run it. Excellent. Let's do something a little more complex. Let's load Star Trek. Going to set it up as though we're a paper tape punch machine and copy it in. We'll come back when it's finished loading. Okay, Star Trek is loaded. Let's give it a try. All right, this is a actually a very nice game. Works really well. I think this has been a reasonably complete survey of basic interpreters available during the early years of the personal computer. BASIC was very popular then, but one of the things that held it back was mass storage. In the next video, I'm going to cover the most popular operating system during this period, CPM. Show you how I got CPM up and running on this 8080 computer.